So for the longest time now, I've been wanting to redo my network here and I finally did it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. And there's gonna be three takeaways for you in this video. First, if you wanna build your own badass network, whether it's home, office, or like me, a combination of the two, I'll show you what I did. Second, if you just wanna improve the security of your existing network, I'm gonna show you the things I did to bump up the level of security I've got. And third, along the way, you're gonna pick up some networking skills that you can use either to build your own networking skills in pursuit of a DevOps job, or just add to the skills you have on your resume for pursuing your own existing career. Hey, what's going on? I am Will from DevOps for Developers, and let's just get right to it. So I rebuilt my network using the Unify UDM Pro, and that's connected to a Unify 24-port PoE switch. And so some of the devices coming off the switch, I obviously have the local stuff that's hardwired here in my office, but for the wireless network, I installed the Unify UA access points, and I'm gonna show you how all of that ties together. Let's start with the UDM Pro. So it's a router slash um, firewall and slash controller. So it has a ton of features in it. And the thing that I like about it is it just kind of packages everything together so that it leads you to doing the right way. And you'll see exactly what I mean whenever I start building out the different networks that I run here at my house, right? So. The UI is really great. It's also got this cool phone app that's pretty full featured for a mobile app in accessing stuff from the, um, from the phone. But one of the coolest things about it is it's got this little built-in tray here so you can hide your weed stash. Hey man. Doll, oh, what is that smell? It's like somebody ran over a skunk. <laughs> um. That's the TCP layer 420 firewall. Yeah, yeah, it always smells like that. So I mentioned that the UDM Pro is a controller as well as a router and a firewall. And here's why, because you've got these different applications that come built into it. There's the network application where we're gonna be focused in this video, but you can also run your security cameras from here as well as a key card access management system to control access to your physical premises. And you can even run a voice over IP phone system as well. So it's a great use for not only home use for people like us that really just wanna geek out on our home network, but also for businesses as well. So let's go into the network application here. And the first thing that we see is our network dashboard where we can see the real time usage and like the overall Wi-Fi level. But here was one of the things that turned me towards Unify, right? Here's our network traffic dashboard and we can see all of the network traffic and where it's going from my internet connection. And this was really important to me because a couple weeks ago I was on vacation and when I got home, I checked my ISP logs and discovered that something was using four gigabytes per day while I was gone and there was no one home because the only thing that was around and using the internet during that time were things like this. And look, I'm not the world's hugest fan of them, but they've got their places where they can be helpful. So we have a few of them, but you don't get to just run free on my bandwidth, right? And so that's what we're gonna focus on in this video is how to control these things. I see your little camera there. You know what, see that? See that plug? I will pull that plug faster than a fat man's third trophy wife. So here's how we're gonna deal with those devices. We're gonna go down into settings, and if we jump right into networks, you can see I've already got them built here, but I, cre I created multiple networks. There's my corporate network, which is all of my work equipment. There's the home network that's for, you know, different family members, laptops and phones and things like that. And then this beast, the unsecured network. And that's where all of those third party devices like the Amazon Alexas and Echoes and Google Home speakers and even install a ceiling fan last week. And the thing has Wi Fi on it. I don't know why you want your ceiling fan to have Wi Fi, but if we turn that on, it's going in this unsecured network. 
So you can see whenever I built this, I turned on a VLAN ID for each of these networks, right? So all three of those networks I just told you about has their own distinct VLAN ID. And what that does is it segregates the traffic so that the devices I put on the unsecure network here can't see or talk to the devices on the home network or on my corporate network, which is really, really important because we know that some of these devices are very likely and will be hacked at some point. And so now they're isolated on their own network where they can't get to my corporate equipment, which is where I have the things that I use to run my business, as well as source code and data and documents for different clients that I work with, all of which that are all of which are subject to different privacy restrictions and legal obligations that I have to maintain. And so that's all segregated and isolated to protect that. Now they're still doing some UI changes to the user interface here. So I'm having to switch back and forth between the new user interface and the old user interface, but whatever. Cause the one thing I wanted to show you here is on this unsecure network, I've also enabled guest mode, which is a really cool feature. It does a port level isolation so that all the devices connected to the unsecured network can't see the other devices on that network, right? So like in my corporate network, you know, my workstation can see my NAS, which can see my Kubernetes servers and all those can talk together. When you turn on the guest network mode, none of that works, which is a really cool feature for devices that you don't trust. So now we've also got some security features built in here as well. Now there are firewalls called internet threat management, um, but it seems to be pretty effective. There's a nice little slider switch here where you can determine what level of protection you're looking for, but you can also customize the threat management and determine which firewall features you want to turn on and off. They also do intrusion detection and intrusion prevention. The difference between those two intrusion detection lets you know when malicious activity has been detected. Intrusion prevention will block that traffic once it's been identified. But let's go back to our Wi-Fi network here. So remember we had our networks here, the corporate, the home, and the unsecured. For the Wi-Fi network, I installed the Unify UAP access points. Those are all connected. And I created a separate Wi-Fi network for each of these networks. So the W8N Corp Wi-Fi network is tied to the W8N Corp network. Home is tied to home, unsecure tied to unsecure, blah, blah, blah. But the cool part is all of these Wi-Fi networks are broadcast across the same access point. So I didn't have to install different access points around the house for different networks. And you just see them all show up from like your phone and then you choose the one that you want, enter in your credentials. And then the Unify gear does the VLAN, does the segregation, does the access permissions based on which network you're connected to. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to cover in that video. The main takeaway points there were the ability to isolate different parts of your network for different types of devices, which is really important in a networking concept, not only at home, but especially in businesses. Now I did it using the UDM Pro, but you don't have to have one of those. You can do it. There are some wireless routers that automatically support multiple SSIDs and perform that segregation like the TP-Link, some of the TP-Link wireless routers. The reason I went this direction was to show you some of the different components that are involved in doing it from a higher level perspective. Like in a business environment, you're going to have servers and wireless and hardwired stuff. And that's what I really wanted to show you here. Um, some of the things that have to happen in there is whenever you create that new network, you need a DHCP server to issue out IP addresses in that segmented network. You need DNS. And that's... Um, you know, maybe you have internal DNS to talk to the devices inside that network, or maybe you just need to relay that to an external DNS provider like uh, Google or Cloudflare. So if it's something you want to implement on your own to practice with, there's a lot of different options for you. Like I mentioned, the wireless router with multiple SSIDs, 
You can launch virtual machines on your existing workstation and build out a private network that way and get some experience with VLANs. You can use something like Azure or AWS to build out different network segments and then practice building the security gateways in between those. And all of those skills are gonna be useful to you in either a DevOps career or just using DevOps principles in whatever career you currently have, whether that's IT, system administration, software development, we all have to have these DevOps skills and networking is a huge component of that so that you understand where things live on the network, how you're allowed to talk with them, and most importantly, how you're able to prevent other things from talking with them. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it gave you some ideas on things to do and practice your own skill set. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see y'all in the next video. And so they also do uh, intrusion detection sen- Blah, easy for me to say. Um, where the hell is the chingalighty? See that plug? I will pull that flat plug faster than a I f that up.